Hi guys, welcome to video number 38. This is the first one in the algebra section. Um, I'm hoping you've watched uh, a lot of the videos already in the number section. Uh, if not, you might want to go back and watch those. There is a playlist for our 37 of those videos. This is the first one of some many algebra ones. I'm not sure how many I'm going to make at this point, um, but I will get there and then there will be a whole playlist of algebra stuff for you to watch. Now, this is the first one, the first basic thing. I'm going to explain a few key words here, um, but this video specifically is on simplifying expressions by collecting the like terms. Now, uh, keywords, terms. Terms are a collection of numbers, letters, brackets, multiplied and divided together, and they could also be to powers. Um, expressions are a collection of these terms. Okay, so when you collect terms together, you create an expression in algebra. Uh, a formula is an expression, but it's equal to something. It could be equal to a term or it could be equal to another expression. Um, an equation is something that you are able to solve. Um, it's something that will be an expression equal to a number or another expression which we'll be able to solve. And then um, identities. Well, identities are um, something that you would describe as stronger than uh, an equation. OK, it's another way of writing the same expression, basically. OK, so you write an expression out in one way, you can write it out in a different way, but you can use an identity to explain that one thing is exactly the same as the other. In this particular video, we need to understand simplifying. When you simplify something, you are um, making it easier to understand. You're making it smaller in some way. Um, and perimeter for the last question is what we need to understand. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of a sheep. Now, um, we understand what a term is, so that's the first part of the method covered. Um, and the second part here, we can collect together, uh, we can collect them together, that means the terms, to simplify if they are from the same family. That's how we've described them. So the x terms go with the x terms, the y terms go with the y terms. If you've got x squared terms, they will go with x squared terms. So we can identify them using different shapes, uh, and we need to include the symbol in front of the letter. So what I mean by that, I'll demonstrate in question number one. Got to simplify these expressions. We've got two x's. We've got two x's. That is a, an invisible plus in front of that. Okay, so there's two x's plus another x, and there's another same shape, plus another five x, and then minus three x. So they're all the same family, same shape is what I'm putting around them. So two plus one x. Now here's a key thing in the world of algebra. We don't write the number one. All right, in front of the, the letter. It's not, there's not no x's there, there's actually one x there. Okay, so 2x plus 1x plus 5x, that's going to give us 3 plus 5 is 8. And then we take away that 3 and we get back to 5x's. Okay, so we've got a total there of 5x. There is our simplified expression. That's what I mean by making the expression smaller. In B, we've got 5x's. OK, and then we've got six y's. We can't collect those together because they're not in the same family. So we're going to put the two x's with those. So five x's plus two x's, and that will give us seven x's. And the x is written with this curly um, c and c stuck together, backward c, forward c. Uh, and that's just to distinguish it from a multiplication symbol. And I'm, I'm sorry I can't type that into the computer, uh, but I can write it here. And then we've got a different shape for the Y family. So I've got to include the symbols in front of the letters and the numbers. And I've got six Y's and I've got to take away eight Y's. And if you've watched my adding, subtracting, negatives number video, then you'll understand that we'll go into the negatives here. We're going eight from six. So we're going to go minus two Y. OK, now get that bit right. You'll get two marks for that on a GCSE exam paper. It's quite pleasant. Uh, and then I've got a third example. We've got minus 3, that's our starting point, minus 3z, uh, minus 5z, and then um, minus 3z. So we've got minus, minus 5 is minus 8, minus 3 is minus 11z. And then I've got these f's. So let's put these f's in another It doesn't matter what shapes you use. And you've got minus 4 uh, plus 12. So minus 4 f's plus 12 f's is going to give you plus 8 f's. OK, I hope all of that makes sense, because um, that's as basic as it gets, unfortunately. Um, I know algebra, uh, uh, algebra will confuse a lot of people, but if you think of it as just a, a letter that's representing a number, an unknown thing, 
that's all it really is, okay? In question two, we've got to simplify these following expressions. So um, in this one, I've included some x squared. So I've got an x squared term here, positive two x squared. And I can only collect that with the five x squared, not the x term here, not allowed to, because it's not part of the same family. So I've got seven x squared. And then I've got three x's. And then I've got a six on its own. So the six isn't collected with the three x's. They are separate families. Okay, so plus three x there and plus six. It's not really that much we could do with that one. We can only collect the x squared terms together. Um, and then in this one, I've included this. It's a higher level of understanding, um, but I think it's it's doable. It's not that difficult um, if you just consider the root three as an x term, okay, and this root three as an x term. So you've got 10, that's a positive 10, plus 11, right? So we've got 21. And then plus, well, we've got three root threes and we've got five root threes. So that would give us eight root threes. OK, so don't get scared of those if you do see one like that. You can see it's very much the same as if you were collecting X terms or Y terms or Z terms together. All right, just move yourself over to the other side of the screen. And what we've got there is an expression to represent the perimeter of a shape. So you might get it to, to set it up as a formula, but I'm just going to do a formal expression that represents the perimeter. If it was a formula, you'd have to put P equals and then write out what it was. But we don't here. We just have to write the expression. And this is literally just collecting the like terms because you're going to add this to this to this to this to this to this. You're going to add it all up because that's what you do when you get a perimeter of a shape. So you've got 2x plus 1x. And I'll just do it in the shapes that we've got there. 2x plus 1x plus 1x plus 2x plus 1x plus 2x. So it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine x's, and then we've got a 2 and a 3, and then a um, 1. If we can add them all together, that's going to give us 6, and then take away that 1, and I guess it's going to give us 5. So plus 5, because it was a positive 5, it's plus 5. And there is our expression that represents the perimeter of the shape. I hope all of that makes sense. Um, like I said, uh, there is a whole number section out there for you to watch now with LinkedIn resources. There will be LinkedIn resources to these algebra videos as well. Um, it is taking some time to do, so please do bear with me if you are um, one of my Bear Cub subscribers. Um, much appreciated. Uh, yeah, enjoy the videos, keep practicing, and keep being lovely to each other. I'll see you in the next one.